Lab09 per programming one. We are going to use uh, to implement a simple Perl script for company network planning and management. Mainly how to allocate the IP addresses to the computers, routers, and so on. In this task, we divide the the top task into two subtasks. One is the sub PL. Second one is the net plan. This is the top one. Then you once you finish, you are asked to uh, generate three local area network plans. This is a task. We have uh, four review questions. It's all about a net sim. And now let's uh, create a folder to hold today's uh, files. Lab zero nine. I want to uh, download all the code from this uh, folder, which I cloned the GitHub. Right? So you can download from here as well with Git pull. Then you go to the labs, lab zero nine code. Control C, come back here, paste. Okay, these are the source code file we need. Open with uh, Visual Studio Code. From inside this folder, we right click, open a terminal. See, we have two profiles. We can uh, make them executable. For this program, we have a uh, the top layer program is this net plan. Here you go through uh, this uh, net plan. So far, we should be able to uh, read it uh, fluently. Here are the packages we need. Here define two constant. Here is the syntax how to define constant in uh, Pro. Here the description. You know this is a QQ, right? Top quote. We can output this uh, description library. Here can uh, usage. The user here document. And print out the description, print out the usage. Then we have a variable, a hash, contains the three types of private network type A, B, and C. You can find more information from all those uh, references. For example, here, you can find the private network information on this Wikipedia. We have type A, type B, type C. In this uh, function get class, you know this one means get the first parameter. Right? We shift, it will shift the first parameter. Or return the first parameter from the com from the uh, parameters passed to this uh, function get subclass. And you are only required to complete these two functions, function one and function two. In these two functions, a unit test is provided. So we will complete 
that you need to test first, then copy those implementation here. We can run this pro program to have a look first to see uh, what it does, right? Yeah, let's uh, run it. That plant will appear, and you can see uh, the description and the usage. They are outputted as exactly what I write here. This is nice, right? And the usage is formatted, looks very tidy. Now, press any key to continue or accept Q to quit. I press any key, press enter. Now it says, enter the number of hosts. For example, in a company, if you need to uh, set a local network for 100 computers, then it says, 100 hosts can be hosted by each of these uh, private networks. For type A, we have so many uh, private networks. Type B, we have 8,192 type B private networks. For type C, we have 512. So choose a type, choose C. Then it says, User uninitialized value this uh, I base IP and H net IP on those lines. The main reason is we have two functions not implemented. Now if we choose a subnet from these five hundred twelve available public subnetworks, for example we choose the one hundredth public network. Now it says I uh, use number of hosts is 25, but uh, we, we don't get any, anything else. They're just empty. So we need to implement. So now we have a rough idea of what the program does for us. Here in this sub appear, the unit test for the net parental pair, we need to finish this 2 to 1 and 2 to 2 and make sure we can get the output here. The output should be this. Okay, for those uh, function statements, please uh, read by yourself. Uh, we will focus on these two functions, how to implement them. For this one, it uh, convert an IPv4 address to an integer. So this IPv4 address it didn't say uh, its type, but based on this uh, master one, the input is a string, right? A string, right? that's it called uh, that's more noted IPv4 address. We can convert each bell to index uh, to hex like this, then convert a hex into a hex string like this then convert hex string into an integer and then return the integer. This is the requirement of this uh, function. So there are some uh, short ways in this method too, but they are not uh, intuitive. So we will use this intuitive way to practice uh, pure programming. So how do we do that? We have three parts. First part, receive the parameter. Second part, process the parameter. Last part, return the result. Right? So we can use uh, define the parameters. So uh, IPv4 is the input. And uh, let's say it uh, IPIN. IP enter. This is what we want to return. Now, we want to receive the parameter. So we use IPv4. 
equal shift. Right? This is the way how to get the first parameter. You shift again, you get the second parameter, and so on. So this uh, IPv4 now it's uh, something like this. We want to convert each byte to a hex. How do we do that? So we need to split the string into four number, then convert the number into a hex number, right? Now how do we split a string? So that one ask Google per split and join. Understanding split and join. Here we want to split this split function used to split this line and the delimiter you see is uh, empty space this is the regular expression this is the string need to be splitted and we will receive the array contains each uh, element splitted here you see this is the result the line contains bot, lisa, maggie, mush Homer and you see uh, got these things but pay attention there is an empty space over there the reason is here we have we have two empty space here okay now we can with this one with this one we can split our IPv4 address right so we need to uh, define another parameter so actually uh, I said yes to you define the parameter in this way each, each, uh, each variable you define like this and add some comments so please add some comments by yourself what you are going to use this uh, variable about its uh, usage then you will uh, make your program very readable and very maintainable so here we create the IP v4 let's call it just SP split but this time we want to hold an array right? this means array So we can hold that one. SP equals split. Now the delimiter and that uh, IPv4 this string to be split. Here the delimiter is uh, a single dot, but that dot is a uh, is a key character used in product expression, so we need to escape it. As it uh, use this syntax, not as code, use this one. Forward slash and a single dot. That dot we need to escape with this uh, backward uh, slash. Now we get all the components, but these components they are string. So we need to convert string to an uh, integer, right? How do we convert the string to integer? Again, we can ask a Google per string to int. That is an automatic string to number conversion or casting it uh, explicitly. You scroll down. You can see here it uh, cast uh, implicitly. We want explicit, uh, explicit type of casting that uses enter like this, like an integer uh, 
function. Right? So now we can cast though the you can use a for loop to cast those elements. Then another way use a map function. So here we let's use a for loop because we want to practice the basic pro program skill. So we can use a for or for each, right? We can use a for my i means the component we use ex explicit uh, adorator so then you may use an uh, implicit adorator in this uh, array but there is uh, no in just uh, just uh, for my adorator then the array do i need a parenthesis i don't remember it's always easy uh, to, co to be confused with many uh, program language. Now we want to convert them into integer. So we also need to uh, declare another variable. Let's call it ipspint. So now, after we convert them one by one, we can uh, implicit initialize it to be empty uh, array. Right? Now we can use a uh, push to push the integers into this uh, IPSP inter. So the element we convert into integer. So here we convert it into integer int dollar i. For debug purpose, we may uh, output these uh, variables. So how could we? Uh, make it more maintainable. We can use something like this, enable debug, enx debug. Right? We can copy these things. If we enable debug, then we print out those variables. Otherwise, it will be disabled. Here you can check uh, a demo for the enable debug. So we can just find uh, like this, control F, EN, debug. Uh, if debug, then you use. We can use a single line uh, if statements. So, first we put this uh, word over here. At the beginning, during the development, we enable the debug. So now we can print out these things. Here you can bring out that IPv4. Dollar IPv4. We want to escape, right? Escape it. Or you we use single quote. Maybe with single quote is more readable. Single quote surprise the variable substitution. This IPv4, we want to print it out. If that EN debug, right, like this, we can also print out this uh, IPSP. Once it's done, we want 
also want to print out this uh, IPHP int. Okay, now we have array. Connect those uh, integers. How do we uh, print an integer to be a hex string? Actually, we don't need to convert to hex string then convert to integer. We can use a bit shift to implement this uh, purpose. But as we discussed, we want to practice pro programming. We will use this way. Is a tedious way, but it's a intuitive, even though it's not efficient. The most efficient way you will see in our next lab, or you just check this method too. But I suggest that you use this uh, intuitive way to practice your pro programming skill. Now, we want to convert each string or each uh, integer to to two hex digits. How could we do that? Now we can use a uh, ace print pure, let's say pure whether it has some ace print. Pure ace print versus print to have a uh, Print, print, as print, import. And for that, uh, as print, here asks us uh, to look this. Uh, here is an example. As print, it will return a result. The result is a string, I think. Now if we want to uh, print out two hex digits, we can use uh, this uh, format. So you, you can go through this uh, list here for the format, unsigned integer in hex decimal. So we use a uh, person uh, x. But how about if uh, that integer is small, then we have only one digit. We need a preceding zero. In order to add precision zero, we need a zero after this percent. And how many digits? We need a two. So we need a zero, two x as a formatter. So again, we can uh, loop slow format this time to make the readable. You may use another variable name, ijk. Then you use, okay, you use uh, J, right? Use I. Here, IP, ASP int. Now for this IP, ASP int, how do we convert it? Again, we need to declare a variable to hold the result. This time we create an IP hex. Wait a minute, we want to convert into a string. Right? To convert into a string, this one we is a scalar, the other string. IP hex. This is the ultimate string IP hex, but uh, for, for each uh, component, we can use string concatenation to concatenate the result. So we define an IP hex. This is a string to make it more readable. IP string hex. Then 
we can uh, use a string concatenation ip string hex dot equal the concatenation right? we concatenate each uh, integer for that integer we use as print to print it as 0 to x the hex number if we want to upcase uh, digits or letters followed by that dot j so we have this uh, string ip string hex now again we want to print out to make the even clearer or make the clearer you can also copy this function name to put here say that uh, variable is in uh, this function right right like this or you can add some uh, number one two three four five to make it more more readable it's up to you now we have this uh, IP SP we want to print out this one IP string hex then we want to convert this string to integer what is this string to integer? So that int function, how do we specify the base? You see that a Perl, when we convert a Perl to an integer, that a Perl int function, we want to uh, see whether we can specify base string to enter at a base. So, do we have those uh, the inter function? Let's say per hex string. To number. Here we have the hex string. We can use just use hex followed by that hex string. Then we will get a hex uh, value. Right? So this uh, looks good. We need a hex, not enter anymore. And uh, that one is what we want to return. Return the IP enter. So our IP enter. equals hex but for this uh, IP string hex I need to uh, prepend with 0x right? we can prepend like this 0x then we have this uh, IP string hex Do we need a specify a return? It's optional. As uh, we learned uh, the last uh, statements, the value evaluated from the last statements will be returned. But to make it uh, more readable, I suggest use return. And now we complete this function. Then we can run this pro this program to have a look to see what we we have. For this uh, top program, type Q to quit. Now I run this uh, sub dot pl, and I have some problem. IPSP require explicit package name. I didn't declare IPSP 
Let's see. Maybe I have a typo. I have an IPSP here. It's an array IPSP IPS. So it, uh, in in which line it says I have a problem? Line forty. And line forty five. Line forty is here. Here, because I, I make a typo, it's an array. The, the second one is a IP SP inter. IP SP inter is also an array, but I again I make a typo here. So now we can save it and run it again. Okay, now you see there are lots of output, is, and we, it's uh, hard to read it because I, I didn't add a new line. But when we check this part, here it convert to integer. You can compare with the output. Compare with the output. Here this integer is not right. The integer is not right. But here you see it's a... Uh, What is not right? Get it for the last one. It was also not right. This is from the IP address string to the integer, and you see here. So I didn't uh, get it right. So what's the problem? Let's uh, hide this uh, debugging output. No, we need the debugging output to see the problem. Right? We only need to uh, add a new line to make it more readable. Okay, now we can run it to analyze the output. Here you see a uh, import, we get this one. Then for that uh, IP inter, IP SP, we get this one because we print out as an array and you see uh, they are put together so this may uh, be confusing here I convert those uh, string to integer we get this integer you see they are still the same then I convert to a hex number now I have a problem here illegal hex decimal digit x ignore at line 53 I just uh, add a uh, problem here, that is 0x. Actually, we don't need this line. This uh, 50, uh, 51. This line is a problem. Unnecessary. Then we draw it again. I think this time it uh, will work. Here we only check this output. Compare with the, the output here. Now you see the first one three two three two two. Okay, now it looks uh, the this first conversion is done. Now for the second conversion from integer to uh, from integer to hex number or to that uh, hex to the decimal denoted uh, IPv4 address how could we do that? 
this time I will show you uh, another technique. Actually, we can uh, copy these things. Then we don't need to uh, copy the definition. Okay, I will just copy everything and put it here. And this time uh, we have IPv4. We have all these things. This shift, this uh, this one, this time we get a uh, IP enter, right? Is the integer in a single integer number? And we want to return. What we learn, we want to return is IPv4. Now, inside this uh, implementation. First, we get the parameter now. For this parameter, how do we uh, convert it into hex string with the x uh, eight hex digits? So we can use that as printful, right? We can convert it with the s printful to convert to the to into a IP string hex. So I will remove all these things. This time, those debugger, uh, I will, I will omit those debug statements. You may add by yourself. Here for this uh, IP string hex equals s print. We want to have eight, so percent zero eight hex, eight hex digits, and. Uh, Add it with zero at the beginning. This is IPv4. Now we have this uh, hex string. Then we want to split this hex string like this. How do we convert uh, like this? Which means uh, two character a time. We split it. Then we know its length. We can insert the dot, or we just uh, extract the substring. Right? We can also e extract the substring. Do we have a quick way to do that, or we just use a for loop? For a string, we have. A Something called a substring to extract the substring. So that substring, how do we use it? Per substring. The substring for the per string is a Four. What does it means? This file. What does it means? This four means offset. The file means the length. Right? We learned it during the lecture. Here, which are here, offset length substring. Okay. Now we can do that. This is a single string. We want to. Uh, IPv4 is uh, now you see uh, it's, an, it's a little bit not a, not a readable. This IPv4 we know it's a string. If you add a string before, then it will be more readable. Here I want to. Uh, so why I have these statements here? I didn't remove it when I copied it from the previous one. I didn't remove it. 
Now this time I want to use substring to separate them. So in that case, I need an array. We can go through this part for each one, each hex group into a decimal number string. So okay, now we can do it like this. We use a uh, array. My I IP string H. Let's say this is a hex array. Okay. Now I can use a for loop. For my dollar I use this for loop. In the from zero to the length of this string. Huh? We already know the length of the string. The length of the string is eight. So we, we are, the index is from zero to seven. The index from zero to seven. Yeah, and we only need uh, extract two by two, right? So we can use this uh, extract it. We will push IP string H A. Uh, what do we want to push? We want to push the substring maybe we can uh, add one more variable to make it readable is it okay uh, I'll write it like this so in this substring we have a uh, string first right the string is this IP string hex then the offset the offset is a uh, dollar i. The length is two. Now the i is only even number. So it's only even number. We can uh, use it that if dollar i mod two equals zero, like this. So now, now we may. Uh, Think it's uh, not as readable, so we can use uh, my element. Let's say just e equals this part. Uh, substring if i equals zero, uh, i mod two equals zero, which means is a uh, even number. We want to push this element into our array. So we have it. Then we want to uh, convert the hex string hex. Actually, we can do it from here. The hex number to to decimal number. So we can use uh, this IP SP inter to hold those results. For my J in this uh, IP SP hex array, for each one, we can push into this IP SP int. we convert it into integer we use hex convert the hex string to a number now it's a integer we want to convert that integer into a string 
again. So I have to convert it into string. Then we can use this uh, IPv4 to hold it. So this IPv4 we can initialize as a uh, empty string. If so, we don't need to push into this uh, HP int. But I want to show you something uh, interesting. Okay, now we have uh, array contains four integers. How could I convert that four integers into a string like a decimal number string and uh, join them with this uh, single dot? So we will do it one more step. This step, I will show you a, a map function. We use a map function. Now you see what the map function looks like. Per map function to array or on array. Here is a map. We have array. We can use the map. The map it will apply this function to each element of this array and return array of the result. That looks nice, right? So we can use that one. If so, we need a an array called IPv4 array. And hold the string of those uh, each byte. IP we for a equals map function now we have two part the second part is this uh, array IPSP int and we know that one is an array contain an uh, integer uh, four integers for it, each integer I want to convert to a string So we just use the string function. Then we will convert each integer to a string. Lastly, we want to join each piece in this IPv4 A into a single string. So IPv4 it will equals join. How to use this join function? Here, now you see this is a join function. Actually, I, I don't remember it, so that's why I typed here. The join function. Join, this is the, the symbol we want to combine each element in that array. So we use a single dot. We use a single dot put it here join this IPv4A. Okay, we complete this uh, function. We want to see whether the work X is packed or not. We can run it first. If there are errors, then we try to debug and uh, solve the problem. This time, this uh, debugger would uh, disable it. I have a problem here, dollar E not declared, 86. Line 86, here that E, because I didn't uh, miss uh, some column over there. Line 93. Strict subs is not allowed where strict subs. Line 3, here the string. So, why it's not uh, allowed? 
because make a make a problem per enter your to string. In the to string, we uh, oops convert a number to a string. We can use a sprint. New America to string conversion in Perl. Here, got this uh, strict warning. It will warn you. Oops, we didn't get a function to turn that. Didn't get those uh, scenes. So in this case, how do we solve this problem? It says it's a bare word string, not allowed. Do I have a string function? I don't know. Per string function. It looks like there is no such function. Here we scroll to here look at the end we see those are uh, functions. We have hex, have char, now we have order on the first character. We we didn't we don't have a, a function to convert decimal string, right? We have a hex hex string. to work the number now we don't have uh, so in this case uh, what could we do we can create a simple function just as a practice sub uh, into string and the parameter is an integer so since the integer we can just display it as an integer we use a double quote then followed by that shift Oops. I think uh, we can define my i equals shift. We can write it like this, right? This is a, it's a string and return this string. We use this name and put it here. Into the string and run it. Okay, sorry about that. It says I uh, initial value I in that uh, line sixty two. Yeah, line 62. Line 62 is this function, right? It says that I is not initialized. So when I put here int to string, this uh, map, 
I suppose it will pass a, a integer to, to this uh, function automatically, but we didn't see that, so it looks like uh, maybe I made a mistake somewhere. Um, I think maybe we need a reference, and this reference we, we will learn later. Okay, now you uh, I initialized J ninety six ninety six here for my J in this IP string A. So why it says this is uninitialized? And uh, get some uh, arrow like this code. So it looks like uh, there's a function passed here. I made a mistake. Per map custom function how do we do that here we need uh, we can pass parameter like this oops because i made a mistake Maybe that string is uh, is good. Do we have a string function? We didn't see a string function. We need to write syntax like this. And inside these clip brackets, we apply this function to the default variable. Here now uh, we still have some problem here, argument nine, uh, 89, 89, 996. Is there a numeric spring? Is there empty value? So, Eighty nine. Eighty nine here. I convert that IP with oops the problem is here. Is IP int now we don't enter again. Here you check this uh, we we have uh, some uh, Problem here that's zero zero right. It should be uh, the same as this one. Why we get a uh, extra zero? Yeah, we get some extra zero. Get four extra zero. So those extra zero, let's have a look at which place we get an extra zero. That extra zero is uh, looks like the slipped in from here maybe. Because here if we we push it again, here we didn't use this uh this uh, context. Uh, this uh, condition, this reason. So if so, we maybe just uh, combine them together. These uh, if statements. So we can go to X, combine these if statements together. Put it here. Uh, 
Let's save it. Now we run it again. Now everything looks good. We are done this part. And let's save it. So this is a very tedious but intuitive implementation and you can practice the techniques you learned in our lecture. There are some uh, trick ways. I don't suggest to use the trick ways. The trick ways and uh, we will use the in our next class. Here I just copy this since right, the first one. We copy this uh, implementation. We copy the whole thing. Control C, come to our network plan. Now you scroll up to find the two functions we need to uh, complete. Here, these are. These are the two functions. We need to replace them. Can I save it? Again, I, I want to uh, disable the debug. Now we can run this uh, net plan. Press any key, continue, host, 200, type C, choose the index, for example, 1 to 3, in this range from 0 to 255. Then you get a configuration. Subnet IP, subnet IP is, we, we maybe better quit network address subnet IP subnet mask CIDR broadcast address gateway IP DNS server and so on and the available host IP range from that one to this one and unused host IPs 53 so you can run this by yourself. But and you can continue 1000 hosts here. You see, you can still have these uh, options or A, B, C. If I want to choose type A, then choose uh, one subnet from there, one, two, three, four, five. And you see a uh, configuration. If I just have a file, Hosts use type C, then you can see uh, some sub subnet mask, unusual subnet mask like this, and also unusual subnet uh, IP. Okay, we complete this task. Now, the real questions. Uh, net sim. Uh, net sim is a uh, network simulator. So you can go through to have a look about this uh, net sim. It's mainly used in uh, malware analysis. It can be used to simulate these uh, network services HTTP, HTTPS, SMTP for email, pop through email, DNS, FTP for file sharing and so on, right? So lots of stuff. So for that one, first I want to find whether I install or not. Which I net sim. Okay, I installed that one, so I need to uh, purge it, which means I install and clean all its uh, configuration.
อะไรน้อยสลีมูดทับอานัสซิมยูเซสแอสแอสคิวทูอินสตอลล์กิสจะคัดเลือกเพื่อการอินสตอลล์นั่นที่น่าสนใจอยู่ที่นี่ the configuration file at this location You can go inside and modify it to suit your needs. And copy it. So it's better make a backup. So we can copy it and make a backup here. And add sim. Dot conf. Dot bk. Then we can use a code to edit a that file, but it's in the system. Uh, directory. So we use a sudo. I would like to use another edit. Plumber. Okay, here is the configuration file of this NL sim. And uh, before we edit anything. I would like to show you. Uh, it run will it will be run as a service, so we can use sudo system control to check the status of this net sim. And you see it says this uh, service is running is actively, and you can see under these C groups, we have all those uh, simulation protocols. We have lots of them, so we quit it. Then install a map and scan the localhost to check these services. Actually, we can use net uh, state right, to see those uh, services. Net state. We can supply those private. You have practiced these uh, commands in IDS two hundred and fifty, right? And the numeric stuff dash e extend. I want to uh, dash a the or and the listening. So we use net state to find a dash l a for the sockets listening server sockets. Just dash uh, error. Have a look. You see the listening. Now, we also want to uh, field those uh, su supplied by INET SIM. So we didn't see the INET SIM output here. Got a. Still didn't hear it. And go up to see uh, whether we are and have another sim. Oops, there are so many stuff. More. Do you see it? Pop three daytime finger HTTP. So we didn't see that another sim because we didn't uh, use the command to show the application that serve this service. So. That uh, which uh, parameter used to show the service? I think it's B binary. Oops, there's no B. So for that program, which one is used to show the program? How well name PID here? Dash P. Dash B is on. Uh, I think it's on Windows. Now on the process info we have shown you should have root to see it all. Okay, now you see uh, all those services supplied by this analysis 
here. You see a lot of them. And they are displayed as a name instead of number. If we want to know the number of this uh, protocol, for example, HTTPS, is, uh, its number is 142, right? If you want to see the number, I think I will use uh, N to see the number. Right? Therefore, 142, now it is hard to see that. It's 443, not 142, my, my bad. 43 for the HTTP, HTTPS here on the right side. Okay, now you see uh, it, has, it can be used to simulate uh, all these uh, popular network protocols to fool those malwares. For example, malwares usually they want to uh, connect to the internet and steal your information or control your computer. So now let's uh, install this. Uh, I think I have this uh, map. So install a map. Oops, through app to install. Okay, it's installed. Now I use uh, a map dash a advanced scanning local host. After that, investigate the source code of this NLC, modify the source code of this echo module and daytime module to customize the reply message and verify with NCAT. So it's still running. We just let it run over there. We want to check the source code. Where, where is the source code of uh, the NLC? Use a lab. So, NLCM, how could we find uh, where the NLCM is? The quick way uh, we can just uh, Google it, or you can use the find command to find it. NLCM Ubuntu location. I want to find those uh, modules. So here, I don't know. Let's use a uh, find. Use lab dash i name and sim. Let's just use a net. Don't have that dash I. Okay, now uh, we can see uh, the a net stuff. It looks like the INET uh, package is not at, under this place. So I wonder what it is. Lab INET SIM. Make it longer. No, not at that place. User. document and the program we want to find the NLCM uh, here we see uh, NLCM.pm it looks like those modules are under this place so we can go there user bin NLCM oops not user bin NLCM user share profile 
and I'm saying do you see it? We have uh, echo dot pm dns dot pm pm means a uh, pro module. So you can uh, open the source code here and uh, modify them. For example, the echo we are asked to uh, change the echo module and date time module. So we can go there. So do make a copy, make a backup. Echo dot pm to a echo dot pm dot pk backup. Now for the date time, the date time is here. The date time dot pm. dot bk. Now we can open those code and use a code to open them. The daytime dot pm and the echo dot pm. Here it asks you don't run it as a sudo user. So we use Pluma. Now we have a daytime here, right? Eh? Have a daytime uh, module here. It uses this uh, generic server, but uh, now how do we know? Uh, here it also uses a generic generic server. It looks like the response from this echo module and the daytime module is not inside this file. Right? Package and sim echo. Here, package and sim daytime. This is a base package. Daytime base package for that one. Daytime dot YTP, daytime dot TCP. So we may need to find that uh, daytime TCP, or daytime YTP, to modify the code. Before that, I would like to. Uh, See whether we can uh, change, find uh, anything in the configuration file. All right. So we can open it to see whether in the configuration file we have it. The configuration file uh, we can use the uh, plumber etc. And that's sim and sim dot conf. If I don't want to see though the error output, we can redirect to the NAR device and the one in the background. Okay, here from here we can continue to find the echo. Right, we can see the configuration for that echo. Can continue. Find the next one. Here the service echo. How to configure that service echo? Port number syntax. Default port number is seven, but we didn't see other configurations. For example, the messaging. Right? Here we see a uh, echo. Request. So, how about echo response? Echo request is usually so we didn't see a echo response. So, which means this message is not uh, set here for the daytime. Daytime service. Here is the service. How do you configure it? Default port number thirteen. Again, you will see uh, its response is not here. Now, here it says uh, actually, before we modify them, we can use NCAT to have a test. 
you know NCAT can be used as a server and a client, right? NCAT dash dash version to see whether I installed NCAT or not. I installed NCAT eh? 7.8. We can use NCAT local host. Now for that uh, echo is port number is uh, so I forgot the port number for echo or, or that uh, daytime. How could we find the, the list of those port number? List of TCP port ports. In this Wikipedia, you scroll down. Seven is echo protocol. Daytime is uh, thirteen. So we can uh, seven for the echo. What does echo mean? Means we send anything, those things will be uh, sent back. Hello, hello. Hi, hi. That's good, right? This means uh, echo. We can type Ctrl C to stop it. And the daytime setting, you see this uh, daytime. Ctrl C, stop it. Now we want to uh, modify the message. For example, you say, this uh, echo is uh, is echoed back by another theme, and also we want to add something. Say this time is supplied by another theme. So we need to find uh, how the program responds to the request. As we see, it's not here. But this is a generic server, so we need to go to its folder to have a look uh, where. We have it. Uh, we can open a new tab. Open a new tab. For that uh, daytime, here we see a daytime here. For echo, we also have echo folder over there. So let's cd to daytime to have a look. Here you see a TCP or UDP. Now we can uh, use sudo. Plumber star dot pm. Oh, this time I still need to uh, add. Uh, I need to enter the password. Not plum. The plumber. Okay. Now. If we use a uh, TCP, this uh, for the daytime, right? You see where it uh, responds with the daytime. I go through uh, this one to see process request. So we need to send back that uh, time. So we need to find the variable which variable holds the time. Here we have second. Your second equals zero, then and so on. So it print this current time here. Right? So we can add something here. Say this current time is supplied by another sim. Is supplied by net sim. And a control is save it. If you use UDP, you also need to change this one. Current time is supplied by a net sim. Connect save it. Then we close it. For that data, uh, data, I ask you to. Uh, for that echo, I ask you to modify by yourself. Here we can uh, see. Oops, yeah. And the LS echo, you can see that is also a TCP and UDP module. Uh, we are not demonstrate. You can modify by yourself. Now it's a modified. I want to test those modify uh, modification. In this, case, we need to uh, restart the service. So do 
system control restart and add sim okay it's restarted i changed that date, date time right so we use ncat uh, local host data is setting you see it is supplied by inetsim so we can control c stop it now you see a uh, pro is uh, very very powerful you can see this inetsim is a uh, very uh, it's a uh, very representative uh, example so verify with the NCAT stop and disable this NLSIM service how do we stop it? yes, sudo system control stop and sim. then we disable it Otherwise, the next time you boot up, it will be enabled and run again. So disable. Then it will not boot up next time. If you this time you try that uh, netcat connection uh, refused because no service serve on that daytime port number setting.